Hi and welcome back to the Tech Mentor. In today's tutorial, I will show you how you can use pivot tables in Microsoft Excel to quickly analyze large sets of data. Let's get into it. So what I've got here is quite a large data set of retail sales for the month of March. And I want to just analyze a couple of things like who my best salesperson was, um, which are repeat customers, which region sells the most, which of my products sells the most, which category sells the most, and just a couple of different things. So with a set like this, there's about 200 entries here. Um, I mean, there's a couple of ways we can do it without using pivot tables. We can always go and filter this and then filter it by a specific salesperson and then look at the sales for the specific person. But you have to go quite into detail because if we have to now filter it by a region, so we want to see what Derek did uh, only for the East, for instance, as you can see, North is not even here. So we already know that there was no sales for Derek in the North region. Um, we can go here, filter it by the region and then filter it by category, let's say appliances and do it that way, for instance. But now to go back, we have to basically go to our last folder which would be the appliances, select all there, go back there again, select all there, and then go back to the salesperson, select all there. And it just, and you can clear all filters, but it's the deeper you go into things, the more work it is to get back. So to use pivot tables, it gives us the opportunity to quickly analyze a whole lot of things very quickly, and we can visually see the changes and play around with it. So to create the pivot table, we can create it from the range directly. You will literally just go to insert it will give you some recommended pivot tables but we're not going to go in there i'm going to create a new pivot table and it would automatically highlight your your whole range for you the only problem with doing this is that it puts it in an absolute reference so it locks it from cell a1 to cell l201 uh, so if you were to add new data to this you will have to insert lines above the last line and that makes it a bit complicated. So let's cancel there and let's change this set of data into a table first. And I'll explain why that's the, a better way to create a pivot table from a table instead of from a range. So we can just click on table. Again, it would highlight your, your range already. Make sure you say that your table has headers and simply click OK. Now for the table, you can choose a couple of different styles here. Um, I'm happy with this one. Now what we can do in the pivot table uh, from the table design tab is to just say summarize with pivot table or we can say insert. I'll go to insert again and I'll say pivot table. And you would see the pivot table from table or range. It already selects table three, which is this table here. And you can put it in the, the current workbook a worksheet or you can put it in a new worksheet. I'll just leave it as a new worksheet and then simply say OK. And then you've got a sheet here. Let me just move it aside. So the first thing you'll see is just this little uh, pivot table report here. And then you've got different fields and you've got different areas here, filters, columns, rows, and values. So all these different fields refer to your column data here. So it will literally have each one of the, these ones as a field. And now you can start adding things. So if you just click on there, most of these would automatically go under the rows. So it would show you one March, Saturday, two March, Sunday. And to, to delete, to remove these, you can unclick it there, or you can just take it and throw it outside the box. So anywhere outside, you can throw it out. So I wanna see, let's start with the sales the salespeople. So I'll take the sales people, the salesperson field, and I'll drag it into the rows. And as you can see there, it's starting to it's folded all the salespeople down to the seven. They are all the sales, uh, rounded it down to the seven salespeople. And now I want to see the total sales they made. So to do that, if you click on it, it would automatically put it into the values field here. So you can either drag it in there like that or just click on it because Excel would pick up that these refer to values. Even if you add the profit, it would add it as a values field. Let's just remove the profit for now. And now from the 200 sales, it's summarized it for me very quickly. Now I can just right click anywhere in, in this column here 
and say I want to um, sort it from largest to smallest. So now I can see, okay, my best salesperson for the month of March was Felix with sales of 17,000 odd. And the worst one was Derek. You can also sort it from smallest to largest, but let's just leave it as largest to smallest for now. Now I want to dive a bit more into this. So I want to see what they sold. So let's go to category first and we'll drag this one into the columns. I'll show you the difference so we can drag it into the columns and it gives us a nice little table here where we can see. Okay, so Felix's best sales were furniture. So that is obviously why he's concentrating on electronics and furniture, the more expensive things. And that's why he's got such a nice total. And the second best year is selling more variety. And so you can now analyze and see what, what these salespeople are doing. If you were to put the category in the rows, it would basically just show it like this. So as you can see, salesperson is on top and category is below. So it would give you the salesperson and then below that what they sold for each one. You can always swap these two around with the category on top. And then it would show you accessories. Who was your best seller or accessories to your worst seller? Appliances, electronics, and so on. But I'll leave the, the category there for now. And let's add the profit. So we'll take the profit and we'll add this to the values. So it will now give you the category. And it would then show you accessories and the sales and the profit for that one. Then it goes on to appliances, electronics, like that. So if we were to move the category down back to the rows, it gives you a bit of a better view now. So in this case, you would rather want the, the category to be under each salesperson or vice versa like that. And then you can, can see for accessories, that was the sum of the total sales, sum of the total profit, and it would we can sort it here. So let's sort the profits from largest to smallest. Oh, it's already like that. Let's change it around. Sort from smallest to largest. And then it would basically show you your, your worst seller for, for that specific category. Let's remove the category here and let's add the specific product. And we'll add that under each one. And then you can see what their sales were. But I want to now see the percentage of sales. So let's take this out here. So we've already got the sum of sales. So to add another range here, another column to show the percentage, we'll use the same one. So we'll take the total sales and we'll put it under that one. It will show you the exact same thing. But I can just change this by simply clicking on that cell and say percentage of total sales. And then we can change it here. Now we can say show values as. And there's a whole range of different options here for you, but I want to say percentage of total column. And then you can basically see here, let's sort this again from largest to smallest. So Felix almost sold a quarter of all the, the sales for this specific month, where someone like Derek only sold 7%. So we know we need to have a little chat to, to Derek. And you can then add some some other let's put the category back back here and let's filter this oh sorry to do the filter we'll take the salesperson and put them under the filter one yeah and then let's go to felix only you can also select multiple ones but i'll just go to to felix for now and i can now see from his total sales 49% was furniture, 41% was electronics. If we go to one of the other ones, let's go to Derek. So he's also mostly trying to sell furniture with almost 60% of his sales going there and not so much on the other ones. And then you can play around and literally just go through each one and get a little bit of a feel of what's going on. So we can just remove the filter again. Let's put our region in a filter here. So now we can look at our different regions. So let's put north in there and we will take, well, now we can see 
in the north region, furniture is the best seller. And in the south region, uh, still furniture is the best seller. Obviously, this works on the total sales. Furniture being a more expensive product, it's bound to be the highest percentage. We want to remove the category there. And we want to put the salesperson back. We can basically then see for the south, because it's on the south now, we can see who sold the most in the south, who sold the most in the north, and, and so on. And to just take it back to, to all the, the, the region areas, just click on all, or we can just take the region out of there. And that's how you can play around. So let's say we want to see the number of sales. You can use any one of these. I'm going to use total sales again there. And I'll say number of sales. And then what I'll do is um, summarize the values as a count. So we know that there were 200 entries. And yeah, it's exactly 200 sales for the month. And we can see when it comes to number of sales that Clara is actually the best seller when it comes to, to the quantity. So let's sort this from largest to smallest. So even though Felix had the most sales, he did not have the most number of sales. And again, to show this as a percentage, we can take the same one again, put it at the bottom there. We'll say percentage of count of sales and then we will summarize this as count and we will show it as a percentage and then you can see the percentage for each one of them and that's how you can can basically play around we can even remove the salesperson here let's just remove this as well completely and let's see our customers so we'll put our customers here so these are all our customers that's returning customers and we'll put the total amount of sales. So we can even see who our best customer is. And then let's make things interesting. Let's add our salesperson under our customers. And then we can see who sells the most to the specific customer. Um, in this case, it would, would be Claro. So Claro is selling the most to our most loyal customer. And that's how you can play around. But if we don't want to see it like this, we maybe want to see it as a more visual way. Let's leave it as our sales person and total sales. And what we can do is let's add the category as a, a column here. Now I want to change this into a chart. So I'll go to insert. I'll go to charts. There's some recommended charts here. You can have a look at this um, and go through here. So I'll just put in a normal bar chart, just normal like this. And then it shows you that it's got each one of your salespeople and now you've got a, a bit of a more visual effect of, of each one of them. Some people like to see it visually and then you can clearly see, for instance, Anna is focused more on electronics where Anna and Ella basically, where everyone else is focusing more on, on furniture sales. Everything that you now change on your perfect table, I'm gonna put this one at the bottom here, so if we were to add the region under the, or on top of the salesperson, let's just move this out. It now groups it like this. So you've got your east, your north, your south, and your west here. Now we can go into a little bit more. So let's go to insert and we'll put a slicer in here. And we will, we've already got the regions, we've got the salespeople. Let's go to actual product. We've got the category as well. And now with this slicer, let's say you only want to say it's to see the bookshelf, the bookshelf sales. So we'll click on bookshelves. It's automatically under furniture. And we can see uh, who sold the most bookshelves and for, for each area as well. If we want to remove any of the filters again, let's take the region out. And then you can see here, because it's on bookshelf, it would show you. You can also select multiple just by clicking there. Let's look at bookshelf, filing cabinets, and tablets, for instance. So what it does here, it would add electronics together as one, because that is your one axis is your electronics. 
and now because um, sorry furniture was obviously your bookshelf and filing cabinet and electronics is your tablet so it would add the different ones together there to clear the filters we can simply just say clear there if we want to remove the slicer you can simply click on it and just press delete so what would happen oh, sorry what would happen if we want to add new data so pivot table doesn't automatically add you have to refresh it but what i'll do i'll just go down here and i want to add a new entry now this is why i said it's better to use it in a table because in a table you can literally just click on the very last cell here and press the tab button and it would automatically give you so let's say there's one that we forgot that was on the 29th of march it is actually a saturday and it was Derek who we forgot one of his orders. And let's just say it was the design who's in the north and he sold 15 bookshelves. Now with the table, because there's formulas in there, it would automatically draw those formulas down as well. So if we go back to our pivot table, you can see Derek cells are still on 6168. What we'll have to do is refresh the, the pivot table. To do that, you can simply just right click and click on refresh. And as you can see, this has now updated. So right, that is just a short little tutorial on how to use pivot tables and also charts with that to analyze a whole lot of data very quickly. And as you can see, pivot tables are not as daunting as people might think. A lot of people hear the word pivot tables and they don't want to get involved with it but it's actually a very very simple and very powerful tool in excel that you can use to analyze data extremely quickly thank you so much for watching and if you enjoy my content don't forget to give the channel some love by subscribing liking sharing and giving me a comment this data in its raw form will be available as a link in the description so you can Download it from there and you can play around with it and see what you can come up with in your own pivot tables. Thank you again for watching.